Hello viewers and welcome again to Discovering Truth and I'm Pastor Forbes from the Gateway Abiding World Ministries here in the Gambia. This is our third and final part in our discussion on seeing the bigger picture. And I believe in part one and last week's episode we've really done quite a bit of what I wanted to share about. And it comes from a heart of love for my country, for us all and for humanity. Because life can be easy, life can be sweet when we live it the way God intended us for us to live because he gave us life. But when we get into that part, when we want to play God and second guess situations, especially when we start becoming bitter with one another, competitive, trying to dominate one another, then we get into problems. God put us in families, in groups, in nations, in kingdoms, in countries, in boundaries, in organizations. And there's always something that we can do that make us relate to one another. And so for that to happen, the end game is that we all rejoice. We are all happy. We all live qualitative lifestyle. We, we Lifestyles, we have legacy. We have inheritance. We can bequeath things to the next generation. And the continuation of the species continues until God decides what he's going to do. Now, for that to happen, you and I, in every relationship, in everything that we do, we must always desire to see the bigger picture of the story. One of the funniest and almost bashful things that can happen to you is when you're playing drafts, what we call checkers. In Gambia, we'll say damir. Chances are you are playing it with some old man under some tree. There's a bench and there's this checkers board there. The man sometimes doesn't even have a shirt. Sometimes he has a pen or chewing stick and his ear has a pipe with tobacco or maybe he's taking snuff, pills. And he's watching the game and everybody's standing around. Everybody's saying, do this, do that. And the man makes a move and you kill his seed. He makes another move and you kill this one and you keep collecting two, three, four and you are smiling and he gives you another one and you collect and then he gives you the next one and then he clears nine of yours and then you sit up. Why? He was calculating. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was opening chances. He was seeing the bigger picture. There is a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. After Psalms in the middle, Proverbs, then you have Ecclesiastes. Woe unto that people who eat in the morning what they should eat in the night. Woe unto that nation whose princes walk on foot. There is something anomalous, irregular. We can't just say we want it now, we want it now. If not, everything about planning design, management, long-term, short-term, SWOT analysis, everything we have learned should be thrown away. No, but we plan. Occasionally, I have people who call me or write to me and say, I want to do public speaking, but can I start at the second level? Because I know myself. And I tell them, unfortunately, I don't know you, but I know what I train in. And you are better off starting at the first level. There are only three segments. Each segment is eight classes. So when you start with segment one, and it may look very simple, you memorize Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech after many things. When you get to segment two, then you start realizing as we are training that, ah, this is why we did this in segment one. It's the same thing with academic curricula. What you did in primary one to six, you find in forms one, two, and three. What you did in one, two, and three, as you choose your subjects for your IGCSE, Cambridge, WASI, O-levels, and then you get to university. It's all curated towards something. So the bigger picture is not just the figment of somebody's imagination. The bigger picture is a reality. Something is going to happen at the end, and it must all crescendo towards it. So when you want to see the bigger picture, you cannot choose to be insular. You cannot choose to be selfish. You cannot choose to be introvertish. You cannot choose me, I, my, and mine alone and push everybody else. 
push every religion aside, push every tribe aside, push everybody who does not look like me, smell like me, sound like me, taste like me, like me who is different. No. The truth is that the best part of life comes from complementarity. You see that in relationships. No smart CEO, MD, ED, DG, whatever he's called, minister, president, king, will have people around him who are not smarter than him. Makes no sense. You bring more intelligent people around you, they complement your weakness, and they make you look good. And you also like to look good, but you know that without this star-studded team, you can't get there. And it takes me to the series we did before this, you and your leadership team. Because, ladies and gentlemen, if I am a $5 C man and I choose friends who are all $5 C people, we will be $5 C until we die. I need to choose $10 C people so I can aspire from 5 to 10. If I'm a $1,000 C, I want to choose $50,000 C friend. And yes, I may serve them. Yes, I may be the errand boy. But there is something that they know that makes them 50000 that keeps me at 1000 That the more I interact with them, the more I get to talk to them, I start getting gleanings of their wisdom, how they operate, and I begin to see myself climbing from 1,000 to 5 to 7, and then I become 50. And they themselves move bigger. And that is why there is a parable in the Bible where three servants were given talents, 5 to 1, and when Jesus Christ said, take the talent from the wicked man who is one, everybody expects him to have given the one with the 5. Jesus said, no, give it to the one with the 10. There's a lot of wisdom behind that. So that even the five can aspire to more. We must want to see the bigger picture for our country. By ourselves, we can work for the bigger picture, but not if we fight itself. Because Jesus Christ said, as we have learned, Mark's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 24, 25, even up to 26, a kingdom that is divided against itself, a house that is divided against itself, even if Satan is divided against himself, he cannot stand. It will self-destruct. It will implode. And I am saying that this series is born out of heart. When I look at the way we talk, we gloat. This tribe wants this other one to go down. This one is swearing that this one can never do this. This one is, we are insulting each other's parents in the, in the open glare of children. We wonder when we see the outcomes of our educational institution, and we just wonder why. It's cause and effect. Until we choose to stop and decide that we're going to do win-win, I want to see the bigger picture. I want to see Africa bigger than Gambia. I want to see Gambia bigger than Wolof, bigger than Aku, bigger than Islam, bigger than Christianity, bigger than Mandinka, bigger than this party, that party. I want to see the two. Until we get there, will be divided. And no fragment is ever the total of everything. As a matter of fact, the law of summation states that the, the, the total is the consummate cumulative total of the constituent parts. You can't hold the elephant's ear and dance away that you have seen the elephant. No. No. If you want a win-win, we must have the bigger picture in mind. And so last week we talked about self-mutilation uncontrollably, but I'm saying the way we are insulting and the way we are talking, we seem to be bringing ourselves down all by ourselves. And when we shame ourselves before people, people just shake their head and say, well, no wonder they are like that. No wonder they are like that. And I'm going to say, no wonder she is like that, he is like that, is them. As I said in segment one, in the first episode, when those students in my university burnt the Students' Affairs Building, they burnt their own files. And everybody had to come with their parents and guardians, sign a letter on the token of good behavior before they were reinstated. And that year, if you had a B, you will thank your lucky stars because a lot of students were given Cs and made to fail and repeat courses in September. Some were even rusticated because you see, is cause and consequence. We must learn to choose to see the bigger picture. Jesus Christ made a statement. He said, a time will come when a man's enemies will be those of his own household, not outside, not external. In fact, let me read it. Jesus was actually quoting from the Old Testament. This is how David put it. 
Even my own familiar friends in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, that is the friend that has lifted up his heel against me. We ate together, we slept together, we talked together, we watch movies together, we play crazy eight together, we laugh together. That is the same person. So Jesus said, a man's enemies are the members of his own household. In the Psalms again, in 55, what I just read was Psalm 41 verse 9. In Psalm 55 verse 12, it says, For it is not an enemy who has reproached me. If it was an enemy, then I could bear it. It is not one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me. I could have hidden myself from that. But it was you, a man my equal, my companion, my acquaintance, my own friend. You are the one. In verse 14, it says, We even took sweet counsel together. We walked in the house of God amongst the people. We were like two peas in a pod. We were inseparable friends. When you saw me, you saw him. When you saw her, you saw her. But then he brought me down. He skimmed against me. She skimmed against me. She lied against me. She tried to undermine me. A house divided against itself cannot stand. A kingdom divided against itself will never stand. It doesn't need external opposition. It will do the job all by itself. It implodes. So ladies and gentlemen, as I look at this subject, and I know you will discuss it in your various groupings and office and homes and all that, are we seeing the bigger picture as Gambians? From 1965 to now, could we not be much further down the road than we are? What is fighting us? And we can't always be saying global supply chains, Ebola, Thomas Cook, COVID, Mpox. We can't always be outsourcing our problems. Can we look inward and ask, what about other countries? Not far from us, in our continent, outside our continent. Same people, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, two hands, one head. What is it that they are doing? There are nations that don't have land. There are nations that have harsh weather patterns. And yet, with a sense of oneness, unity, togetherness, focus and direction, and thinking win-win with the bigger picture, they're able to turn around what the Bible calls their valley of Baca, their depressed situation, and turn it around for good. Dubai is not in heaven. Rwanda is not in heaven. Nations that we're all talking about, they're here. And some have gone through 60 years ago, you wouldn't go to Dubai. 1994, Rwanda. Genocide. 800,000, almost a million people. How do a people rise up? Because they see the bigger picture. I am not Tutsi. I am not Hutu. I am Rwandese. I am not Aku. I am not Sose. I am not Pol. I am not Wolof. I am not Ngaende Njai. I'm not Jola, Kasa, Benjona. I am Gambian. Bigger picture. Bigger picture. When we see that, ladies and gentlemen, we will do better. I want to read my last scripture. And that's where I'll end this three-part series. And remember, I have been inviting you all to our 36th annual convention, Abiding Word Ministries, is 37 years old. Three short years of 40 and 13 short years of 50 years of existence to the glory of God. And come and rejoice with us, celebrate with us November 6, November 7, 8, 9, and 10, 6.45 in the evening, 10 o'clock in the morning, and the last day, the Sunday, the real praise celebration, 6 p.m. Just come and have a great time. Anybody you meet at the entrance, tell them Pastor Forbes invited me and come and have a great time. Our theme for this discussion is called ministry, how we can be go-betweens to help serve the goodness of God to one another and be a mighty blessing. I have a great friend coming from Ghana, author Ralph Inchwe, has a phenomenal ministry, goes around the world, blessing people honoring people on song heroes in every continent in the world. Recently, himself just received a Lifetime President Award from America. I also have my great friends, Jane and Pella 
Omar Pella, they were just here three years ago and they're all excited coming. We have our saxophonist, Jer Jerry Omole. We have Humi Sambu, our own uh, Gambian lady. And we have Mari Gomez. We have AC, Gambian Nigerian. We have all of us. We have you. Let's all come together in November 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 for Destiny 2024. And as I bring this series called Seeing the Bigger Picture to an End, I want to read from the New Testament book of Philippians. I talked about this book last week where I said Jesus Christ said, count others better than yourself. Philippians has just four chapters. That's why you must read and acquaint yourself. I'm sure you say, Pastor Forbes, how do you do this? Because I read, I acquaint myself, I get my principles and practices from the word of God, the Bible. And so in Philippians, the fourth chapter, the eighth verse, as Paul was ending what God put in his spirit, penning it down. This is what he says to the Philippians, and I extemporize it and extrapolate it to us, the Gambians, to people living in the Gambia, and to everybody around the world. Listen to these words of wisdom, comfort, counsel from God. Finally, brethren, or finally, brothers and sisters, or finally, people of God, Whatsoever things are true, one, whatsoever things are honest, two, whatsoever things are just or right, three, whatsoever things are pure, four, whatsoever things are lovely, five, if there is any virtue in them, any moral excellence, if there is anything praiseworthy of these five things, Think on these things. Dwell on these things. Let your life be anchored on them. What are they again? Things that, okay, anchor your life on truth. Anchor your life on honesty. Gambians, let's anchor our lives on justice. Anchor our lives on purity. Anchor our lives on things that are lovely. And anchor our lives on things that are of a good report. Don't be in a hurry to undermine somebody and post something on social media and make it go viral and insult in the comments. Don't be in a hurry to spread untruths. Don't be in a hurry to be dishonest and lie through our teeth. Don't be in a honest to be unjust to people because what you sow, you reap together. Think of the bigger picture. Think of tomorrow. Think of things that are lovely. Think of, think of things that have a good report, good report, good report. Something that you will see on CNN and beat your chest and say, yes, I'm a Gambian. Yes, she's a Gambian. Think of things that are of a good report, things that are virtuous, things that have moral excellence into them and things that are praiseworthy. If we do this, we will be seeing the bigger picture and we will have a win-win for our country. And always in everything we do, legacy and bequeathing great things, great inheritance for the next generation is always in our hearts and definitely on my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the bigger picture. Never lose the war because you won the battle. Rather, let the battle go, but win the war. Do not sacrifice tomorrow and the future on the altar of today. A lot of people roasted their fingers more than two decades ago. What can you say? It's cause and consequence. Yes, there can be forgiveness. Yes, there can be mercy. Yes, there can be understanding and sympathy and empathy and all that. But last, life is cause and consequence. As the people of the West say, you do the crime, you do the time. Let's look at what is going to be good, better, excellent, true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, virtuous, praiseworthy. Let our hearts meditate on that. So next time you see a story about somebody that is not adding value, is demeaning them, before you just write, before you write, is it sure? Have you fact-checked it? Is it praiseworthy? Is it true? Is it honest? Is it pure? Is it just? Is it lovely? Is it of a good report? Is it added value? Or is it pulling somebody down? Would you like that to be said about you? If we do these things properly, we'll begin as a nation.
to see the bigger picture, the vitriolic temperature in the country will go down. We love one another, accept one another, appreciate one another. Even when we disagree, we will not be disagreeable. We'll have a win-win, seeing the bigger picture mindset. And with these words, I put this three-part series to an end. And as I always say, until I come your way next week, by the special grace of God, may God keep us. Win-win, bigger picture of a marriage, bigger picture of an institution, bigger picture of your academics, bigger picture of your health, healthy eating, bigger picture of your studies abroad, bigger picture of renting to own, bigger picture, bigger picture, political, bigger picture for the nation, national assembly, judiciary, executive, the press, civil society, religious organizations, all the ministries, everybody, bigger picture, so that the day will come when we'll all rejoice. Have a good day, and may God's mercy and goodness keep us all. Amen. Discover